Hey everyone, I'm Russell Mullen with Mother Earth News and today we're going to be doing a package installation, a package of bees. Uh, so we have some bees here that we got from Wolf Creek Apiaries. Uh, they're a pretty unique mix of Russian, Italian, and Carniolan genetics, so uh, it's pretty cool that we get to work with these today. Uh, they're based in central Tennessee and they're kind enough to send them in and we're going to be installing them into a sort of a unique hive You may not have seen one before uh, It's a horizontal Langstroth from Bespoke Bee Supply and It's kind of a hybrid hive. It's a mix between a Langstroth hive and a top bar hive And you'll see a little bit more once we get in there. We have this double body um, brood box down here and It'll become more, a little more apparent how it's different and how it's similar once we open it up. And so we have our bees here. Uh, we probably have somewhere around three pounds or so. And so we're gonna go ahead and set these down here. And the bees are generally in a pretty gentle mood right around this point. They're, they're kind of in swarm mode. They're, they're not a swarm of bees that was captured, but, but they're sort of induced that way. So they're bees from all different hives. They're put together. They're kind of confused, uh, but there is a queen in there, and they're just trying to find a home. So they should be pretty gentle, but it's always a good idea to wear safety gear whenever you're working with bees. And then we have our queen. She's gonna be hanging in here in a cage, a queen cage, and this is what's connecting her to the box. And we'll go ahead and pry that off and, and pull her out and we can get a closer look. All right. And so you can see that we have the strap holding our queen cage in place. And we have um, a can here that's actually filled with a simple sugar syrup that the bees have been eating during their journey. So we're just gonna kind of pry this can up. They can be kind of in there pretty tight sometimes. So you might have to work around just a little bit. This one's not in there too tight. And we'll just work it up slowly. You're gonna wanna be careful not to let your queen cage fall in the bottom. Otherwise you're gonna have to fish her out with your hands and it's, it's really not a pleasant ordeal for you or the bees. We'll just pull this up slowly. Go ahead and pull that last staple for the queen cage. Be sure to hang on to her. We'll pull this out. Set it off to the side. And then just go ahead and pull the queen out. And then gently replace the cap here. We don't want bees flying around too much. And sometimes you'll see the queen in there. She'll have a few attendants with her. Sometimes she won't. Looks, time, looks like she does in this case. You don't want to see if the, if the bees on the outside, if they're, if they're trying to feed her. And it'll give you a good idea of whether they've accepted her or not. And it does, I can, I can see them um, putting their proboscis down there. So it looks like they are attending her is a good sign. And they are in the way. You can use your bee brush gently or you can use a feather, which works really well. And I'll just kind of scoot them out of the way so that you can get a closer look at the, the queen in there. You can see her, she's a bit longer than the rest of the bees. And so with this kind of cage, this is a cage that's, that's really common from the south. They're a little bit different than the California cages. Um, you'll see that you have a cork in both ends. So you have a cork on this side and you have a cork on this side. And this portion right here is actually filled with candy or it's also known as queen candy. So it's just basically a sugar. And it acts as sort of a, a gateway for the bees uh, the hive to get to her, to the queen. And so it gives them time to accept her, to, to realize that she's, she's their queen, that she's there. Uh, and basically just gives you about two or three days of time. Some people like to poke a hole in there in order to speed up the process. Um, it's kind of up to you. So I'm gonna go ahead and get, you can use like a nail or a thumbtack or, or a knife to 
pull that cork out. You want to be sure to pull the cork out only on the candy side. You don't want to pull it out on this other side, otherwise it'll just let your queen out and she could fly off and go anywhere. So just be mindful of that. All right, so you can use a couple of different things in order to pull the cork out. You can use a pocket knife. I, I happen to have uh, kind of a unique push pin that I really like to use. Um, it's pretty easy to handle, it's long, and you can really get in there and pull the cork. Okay, and that's it. Now I have the cork out and the candy exposed. And we'll go ahead and pull everything off of here. And another interesting feature about these is that they have a, what's called a quilt box. And so you can see that it has canvas material on the bottom and it has some sort of material, uh, usually wood shavings, and that just helps to create insulation during the winter and the summertime and also helps to um, absorb excess moisture. And then we have our under quilt cover. They kind of act like a, an inner lid that this canvas sheet that I just pulled off, that's used to keep them from um, covering the quilt box in propolis or building comb on it where we don't want them to. The frames that come with this box, they're foundationless. And so you can see that there's a, there's a wedge running along the top here. And that's to kind of help direct them on where to, to build their comb. Well, I don't always trust them to build their comb exactly where they're going, especially because this is a new box and doesn't have anything in it right now. And so what I'm going to do is actually put in alternating foundationless and foundation frames in order to help give them a little bit of guidance. And then as they start filling in the foundationless frames, then I'll start adding in more of the foundationless frames and pulling out these ones, the foundation frames, and basically moving them around. Uh, the thing that you want to watch out for is that with a foundationless, if you have one frame that starts, uh, they start building comb on, uh, bad comb on, then it tends to repeat itself all the frames down. And so one frame can turn into two, can turn into three. So you want to be a little more careful when you're working with foundationless frames to make sure that they're building their comb like, like you want them to. And also that your hive is very level, um, especially from side to side, because the bees like to build their comb uh, plumb, basically in line with gravity. And so if you have if you have a, a hive that's, that's wonky, then they're going to build their comb uh, sideways. It could connect to the frame next door um, and all kinds of strange things. So one of the first things you want to do is make sure that your, your hive is, is as level as you can make it. Push a thumbtack in. You just want to be careful that, that you don't go through the cage in a place that's going to harm the queen. So just be very careful when you're poking holes in here. And that all looks to be okay. All right. Now I'm gonna hang this in here, the screen off to the side, in between two frames with foundation. And I'm just gonna push them together and then I'm gonna take a thumbtack and I'm just gonna go ahead and, and push that there. And that'll give the bees that I'm about to put in here easy access to the queen. They'll be able to feed her. Um, it's also a good idea to hang the queen up there near the top, um, as high up as you can get her, especially if it's colder out, because the bees will need to get to her in order to ball around her to keep her warm. It's not such an issue right now uh, where we're at here in Kansas because we're, I looked at the long range forecast and it's supposed to stay around the 90s as highs and 60s as lows for the foreseeable future. So. All right, and I may pull one more of these out. And now basically what we're going to do, you may see a lot of videos where people like to dump the bees in. You can certainly do that. It's, it's not going to hurt them. Sometimes a good idea to feed in the beginning when you're starting a new hive. They don't have any reserves 
Uh, I think it's supposed to rain tomorrow. Uh, they won't be able to get out. It, there is a good flow of nectar right now, but but they may not be able to get out in the next couple of days, and that could be a problem for them just starting out because they don't have anything stored up. So I'm just gonna set that in there. I'll check it in a couple of days. I'm gonna set this in here. You can see it fits in there really nicely. And then we're simply going to lift the top off of this. And they'll realize pretty shortly that that the queen is, isn't in the cage, or isn't in, in the box with them, and they'll migrate over on their own. The bees inside of the box are going to be giving off a pheromone called the Nazanov pheromone, and, and basically what that is, it's a, a pheromone a, a, that signals, hey, um, this is where you wanna be, um, this is where the queen's at, come in here and so you'll see that really quickly the bees are finding the entrance to the hive having never gone in there before and this is their only entrance this is also one good reason why, why while installing a new package of bees that you'll you may not want to have your your screen bottom board you want to have to have it blocked up otherwise you may end up with lots of bees hanging on the bottom um, they'll be confused this way they can very easily find the entrance they want to get back to the queen. Um, and I'll check back in a couple of days to check on the sugar candy on the queen cage. If they haven't um, eaten through it yet and gotten the queen out, then I'll go ahead and, and remove it and just um, let her loose in there so that she can um, begin getting to work. And that's really all there is to it. There's. Uh, I found that there's not really any need to, to dump the bees out. You certainly can. It's, again, it's not going to hurt them or anything, but, but why stress them out more than you need to? Something that's also commonly seen is, is people spraying the bees down with uh, sugar water. Um, that kind of keeps them from, from flying. They, they tend to, to spend time like eating it off of the sides and things like that. Uh, but there's really no need to, to soak them with that either. So uh, you can just make a judgment call on that on your own, do your research. Uh, this is just a method that I prefer and, and so I'm sharing it with you. And that's really all there is to it. Um, I hope that this will inspire you to not be intimidated to go ahead and, and try installing a package of your own. Uh, keeping bees is a really, really awesome, really fulfilling uh, hobby um, or business potentially. And I think that it's really neat to be able to, to work with them and just to watch them. They're a really neat creature. So thanks again to Wolf Creek apiaries for for sending us the bees and um, to bespoke bee supply for this awesome hive um, both of these companies are really committed to sustainability uh, wolf creek they do all natural um, they don't use chemicals uh, for their bees so i'm really excited about that and um, bespoke bee supply they're really committed to sustainable um, solutions for putting their hives together Earlier we had installed a package of bees into this horizontal Langstroth hive and I went through how to do it the gentle way instead of taking the bees and shaking them out and stirring them up. Uh, we simply just took the package and we set it into the hive and so now I'm going to go ahead and show you the next day um, about taking the package out and seeing you know exactly what that process looks like after it's been completed. So um, I'm going to go ahead and throw my veil on and then we'll jump right into it. So as you can see, the bees have bunched up around where I hung the queen cage. You can see where I hung the queen cage in between two frames here. And I had simply set the package in here. I would taken out about four or five frames, um, placed the package in there full of bees. Uh, and then the bees themselves, they just went ahead and, and moved over to where the queen cage is hanging all on their own. And so we'll go ahead and pull this package out and show you that there are just a handful of bees. Actually, I think all of those bees are on the outside. There's maybe only two or three bees left in there. So, so you can see that they did make their way out without having to shake them out. I'll set that off to the side. And I'm gonna go ahead and 
check the sugar syrup and there's still plenty in there and I'll probably replace that in the next day or two. We're supposed to have some thunderstorms and it'll be good for the bees to have a little bit of supplemental food because uh, they won't be able to get out to forage and they don't have any stores so that'll be really important. And I may have talked about it but I'm doing an alternating pattern of foundation and foundationless frames and this is just to, to help give them a little bit of, a, of guidelines that way if they they do get a little funny with their comb then it's not some, a pattern that they're going to repeat over and over again and since this hive is just starting out then that's something that I want to keep an eye on and really that's all there is to it it's as easy as that you don't have to go and shake all the bees out um, you know, why force something to go somewhere if you can just entice them to go there themselves? That's kind of how I look at it. So uh, that's really the role, all there is. So, so thanks for joining us, and I hope that you learned something. And if you have any questions or comments, go ahead. Please leave them in the comments. Uh, we'll try and answer any questions that we can. And thank you for joining us, and I'll see you next time.